Good morning. Welcome to the McKinley Schools. My name is Cindy Nielsen. I'm the principal of the, of, of the McKinley Schools here. We are very excited to host this event today. We are grateful to Mayor Wu, Chairwoman Robinson, and Superintendent Caselius for this exciting announcement that follows through on a long-awaited promise. While we know this is part of a longer-term comprehensive plan, this first step toward designing a facility that provides our students with the academic and social-emotional supports they need and deserve is a dream come true for our students, families, and staff. I'm excited to turn over the microphone to Mayor Wu. Thank you so much, Cindy, for your leadership. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. Um, I will recognize a few folks, and you'll, you'll hear from many of them after me. Um, but in addition to our incredible school leader, we are joined by, of course, Dr. Brenda Caselia, superintendent of BPS, uh, Chairwoman Jerry Robinson of the Boston School Committee, um, Chief of Operations Dion Irish, um, President of the Boston Teachers Union Jessica Tang, um, uh, chair of SPEDPAC, but also a member of our superintendent search committee, Ms. Rox Roxanne Harvey is here with us, um, Ms. Marcella Elliott-Thompson, BPS parent and teacher, our uh, deputy superintendent Drew Eccleson is here as well, um, who did I miss, uh, chief of equity Charles Granson, our, oh, state representative Russell Holmes, um, chief of Operation. Chief of Operations, Indira Alvarez, who's responsible for so much of this today. Um, who did I miss? Oh, and, and Sam DePina, who has been carrying us on his shoulders on so many of the facilities issues. Um, Senior Advisor Megan Costello, Chief of Community Engagement, Brianna Malor, uh, Deputy Policy Director Tali Robbins. Okay, anyway, I will. <laughs> Chief Financial Officer Nate Cooter. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, this is a really thrilling announcement and one that we've been working towards for some time, not only in our new administration, but as a city for decades and generations. And so I want to ground us in a little bit of that history nationally and locally. Um, we are here today talking about a Boston Green New Deal and a Green New Deal specifically for Boston Public Schools. Ninety years ago, President Franklin Roosevelt promised our country a new deal, programs and public works projects that address multiple crises at the time to pull us out of the Great Depression, tackle infrastructure issues, bring about jobs. The New Deal accomplished much and had lasting impact and prioritized projects that were ready to go. And we know today that the um, one major shortfall of the New Deal then was in not leaning into and making sure that racial equity was also a key part of that focus. Today we're here to carry on that legacy but correct and repair that piece of it. Projects that are shovel ready and here waiting for, for our facilities and operations team to take on in Boston represent the lasting impact that our young people and school communities deserve. And there's similar momentum today. Activists, scientists, leaders at every level of government are sounding the alarm for us to address the climate and public health crises from, of our time and to recover economically from COVID-19. Today we're taking a step towards accomplishing all of these goals, centering our young people as the citywide mission and priority of Boston. The New Deal helped face down the threat of the environmental crisis bearing down on our country in the 30s, and today we need to address the climate crisis that Boston is already experiencing. Now is a time for bold, decisive action. We must implement a Green New Deal, and Boston must lead the way. To do so, we are engaging every part of our city government and city infrastructure. It's in our approach to housing, in our approach to childcare, and of course, to education. So today we are officially launching the Green New Deal for Boston Public Schools. This plan will <laughs> this plan will bring major new construction and renovation projects to our school facilities and increase the pace of district-wide upgrades like renovating bathrooms, planting school gardens, installing water fountains. The projects we're proposing right now represent more than $2 billion of additional city investment. But we're not here to focus on a number, we're here to focus on the impacts and to make sure that we have that impact touch every single school community, every neighborhood in Boston, that $2 billion will continue to grow year after year as new projects enter the pipeline. We are starting 
right here, literally right here, with buildings like this one. And that will not only, again, give our young people and educators the healthy, inspiring spaces they deserve, but reduce our city's carbon footprint, strengthen the ties of community and democracy. I used to live right around the corner, a couple streets down from here, and so the McKinley School was our polling place. This is a hub for community, not only for the young people who are receiving their, their education and services and, and supports here, for the educators who make up our community, but for neighbors from all around the area to recognize that every school building we have is a larger hub for community, for participation, for democracy. Boston's building sector accounts for two-thirds of our citywide emissions, and Boston Public Schools represent nearly half of all emissions from city-owned buildings. A majority of our school buildings were built before 1950. Many, as we saw during the pandemic, with the frustrations and the difficulty of how to administer learning during an airborne pandemic, many lack quality and modern HVAC systems, clean drinking water, let alone the facilities and resources for a world-class education that is possible here in this mecca of education and opportunity. The current state of many of our school's facilities compromises the health of our students, our educators, our communities, and directly impacts educational opportunity. The McKinley schools, the elementary school, and the South End Academy right here are among the highest needs facilities in our district. They serve some of our most marginalized students, including a large number of black and Latino boys and young men with special needs. And for too long, our infrastructure has not provided the baseline for our students' needs. Clean air, safe water, and an environment conducive to learning. We now have the ability and the opportunity to deliver improvements to our school communities while accelerating climate action in Boston. And I want to be clear. This is not only an opportunity to improve our school buildings and to make them more effective learning environments, more climate resilient. Again, this is an opportunity to build community and to supercharge our economic recovery. This public investment will ensure that our contracting opportunities also are equitable so that we are putting our money where our mouth is in closing the racial wealth gap and make sure that we are investing in our communities, in businesses owned by women and people of color. There are 14 construction or renovation projects in this first phase of the plan. I'll quickly tick down this list. Renovating the McKinley schools, building a new educational complex at Madison Park Technical Vocational High School, state of the art. <laughs> Renovating the Blackstone Elementary School, the King School, the PJ Kennedy School, and the Cleveland Building, which houses the Community Academy of Science and Health securing a long-term home for the Horace Mann School, building a new high school at the currently empty West Roxbury Education Complex, expanding the Otis School with a new building on Paris Street, establishing new pre-K pre to six schools in Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan, and on the Jackson Mann campus, renovating and reconfiguring the Timulty School and the Irving Building, which will be sitting empty by the end of this school year. We are also planning major upgrades to White Stadium, just an underutilized gem of our city in Franklin Park. This will better serve our student athletes and help give another wraparound support to what gets our young people excited to be part of this community and this district. We will also be improving facilities district-wide by increasing energy and water efficiency, renovating bathrooms and kitchens, installing solar panels, air conditioners, water fountains, improving schoolyards and planting school gardens. This work will touch every single Boston Public Schools school community. These improvements are long overdue, decades overdue in many cases, and we are often seeing the consequence of deferred maintenance. Our young people see that every day in the feelings they have when they enter buildings where you can see water stains on the ceiling tiles or shades that don't work properly or windows that are a little sticky to open. And we're seeing that that has built and reinforces mistrust between the city and the community we are here to serve. We are committed to rebuilding that trust by getting these projects done right in partnership with communities. Because of the ambitious work ahead of us, upgrading all of our school facilities will be a decades long project. And we need a clear, reliable timeline to deliver the effective, efficient results that our communities deserve. So, 
a lot of what I'm learning in this new role is that often the biggest barrier in Boston is not resources, it's not ideas, it's not helping hands and partnerships from the community. It is getting the organizational capacity right to be able to follow through and deliver on these partnerships and actions. This is too large of a project and our young people are too urgent of a priority to leave to any one department, including our incredible Boston Public Schools District. The scale and scope of these projects requires coordination and the full force of city government and, and the city. That's why we created a new cross-departmental team with leadership from Boston Public Schools and City Hall. We are building this team's capacity to ensure that our students have access to the quality facilities they deserve and th that this rollout will be efficient, effective, and equitable. Um, and so I know Chief Irish will, will speak more about that, but we are really, I would say exponentially, we're, we're dramatically increasing the, the staff capacity and the partnership from our City Hall operations team and cabinet to be able to support and work alongside the Boston Public Schools facilities and operations team. The, this country's New Deal works to repair our nation's economic foundations, rooted them in environmentalism, expanded job opportunities, and created an infrastructure that would sustain generations. Today we are establishing stronger roots for our Boston Public Schools and the many, many families who are directly touched with young people in our classrooms and every single one of our Boston residents who are affected by, made stronger by our Boston Public Schools. I'm so grateful to have so many partners from across our city and communities to deliver on a plan for our students, our families, and our future. And uh, most of all, as a Boston Public Schools mom, I am on a tight timeline to, to make sure that this gets done. Uh, before I turn this over to Superintendent Caselius, I want to make sure, um, I thank you so much to our media partners who also always make sure there's bilingual coverage in English and in Spanish. Gracias a todos por estar aquí con nosotros. Me emociona con, uh, que estén aquí para este anuncio. Estoy agradecida de estar junto a tantos líderes de la comunidad, especialmente al Superintendente Caselius que ha impulsado las inversiones en instalaciones escolares desde nuestra primera reunión. From our very first conversation we had, this was the focus. Hace 90 años, el presidente Franklin Roosevelt prometió al país New Deal, un conjunto de programas y proyectos de obras públicas que aborda, abordaban múltiples crisis de la época. Nos levantó de la Gran Depresión abordó problemas ambientales y mejoró mucho de nuestra infraestructura. El New Deal fue capaz de lograr tanto y de impactar a tanta gente porque priorizó proyectos que estaban listos para empezar. Hoy tenemos un impulso similar. Activistas, científicos y líderes de todos los niveles de gobierno están haciendo sonar la alarma para que abordemos la crisis climática y nos recuperemos de, re, recuperemos de la pandemia. Ha llegado el momento de actuar. Estoy emocionada de lanzar un Green New Deal para las escuelas públicas de Boston. Gracias. Este plan incluye importantes proyectos de construcción, renovación y um, uh, uh, inversión en nuestras instalaciones escolares. Y aumentará el ritmo de las mejores mejoras en todo el distrito, como la renovación de los baños, la plantación de jardines jardines escolares y la instalación de puentes de agua. Los proyectos que proponemos este año representan más de 2 mil millones de dólares, oh, no, no, 2 mil billones de dólares de inversión municipal. Empezaremos aquí mismo con edificios como este y reduciremos la huela de carbono de nuestra ciudad. El sector de edificios de Boston representa dos tercios de las emisiones de toda la ciudad. Y las escuelas públicas de Boston representan casi la mitad de todas las emisiones de los edificios propiedad de la ciudad y gobierno municipal. La mayoría de nuestras, nuestras escuelas se construyeron antes de 1950. El estado actual de muchas de nuestras instalaciones escolares compromete la salud de nuestros alumnos, nuestros maestros y nuestras comunidades y tiene un impacto directo en las oportunidades educativas. Las escuelas McKinley están entre las instalaciones más necesitadas de nuestro distrito. Tiene algunos de nuestros alumnos más marginados 
entre ellos el gran, un gran número de niños y jóvenes negros y latinos con necesidades especiales. Durante demasiado tiempo, nuestras escuelas no han satisfecho las necesidades más básicas de nuestros alumnos, aire limpio, agua potable y un ambiente fav favorable para el aprendizaje. Ahora tenemos la capacidad y la oportunidad de aportar mejoras a nuestras comunidades escolares mientras aceleramos la acción climática en Boston. Hoy podemos ver las consecuencias de años de mantenimiento diferido. Estamos viendo la desconfianza entre la ciudad y la comunidad a la que servimos. Nos hemos compro comprometido a reconstruir esa confianza, asegurando que esos proyectos se hagan bien. Debido al ambicioso trabajo que tenemos por delante, la mejora de, no de todas nuestras instalaciones escolares será un proyecto que tomará décadas y necesitamos un calendario claro y viable para obtener resultados efectivos y e eficaces. Este es un proyecto demasiado grande para dejarlo en manos de un solo departamento. Por eso hemos creado un nuevo equipo interdep interdepartamental con la dirección del gobierno municipal y las escuelas públicas de Boston. Actualmente estamos aumentando la capacidad de este equipo para garantizar que nuestros estudiantes tengan acceso a las instalaciones de calidad que merecen. Queremos que este proyecto sea eficiente, eficaz y equitativo. Estoy feliz de estar aquí para establecer una base sólida para el futuro de, de las escuelas públicas de Boston. Eso es agradecida por contar con tantos compañeros de toda la ciudad y todas nuestras comunidades para presentar un plan en el que puedan confiar nuestros estudiantes, nuestras familias y nuestro futuro. Como madre de, de BPS, estoy muy ilusionada con la posibilidad de entrar en este futuro junto a todos ustedes. Uh, and now, I'll turn it over to Superintendent Caselius, our district's biggest champion for equity and, and uh, the, the loving environments that our students deserve, literally from the very first conversation we had about this role. She has been pushing, and so I'm so grateful for her leadership to get us to this moment. Well, today is a great day for our BPS kids and families, and I just can't thank you enough, Mayor, for your commitment and the city's commitment to uh, getting better facilities for our students. You know, when I first came to Boston, um, I was shocked and surprised on my 100-day tour uh, as I went and visited every single school in Boston Public Schools, and it was there that I saw with our family engagement team firsthand and spoke to our teachers about the conditions of our facilities and their desire and our parents' desire to finally get our facilities in um, get the right kind of investment that matched the, the kind of learning environments that they deserve. So, Mayor, today is a great day, and thank you so much. I want to recognize Jerry uh, Robinson, our school chair, who also has been a longtime uh, Bostonian and champion for early childhood, as well as uh, our students in our K-12 system. I want to thank Dion for your partnership and my team, Indy and Sam, and the entire facilities team, and our amazing custodians who... <laughs> who have been working day in and day out to maintain uh, these uh, facilities and do the best they could with what they had. And so um, finally today we are getting a capital budget that matches the need and a commitment from the mayor to continue to add to it uh, with these immediate projects. The projects in this plan are projects that serve some of our most vulnerable students. And so centering equity, like the mayor said, is just absolutely critical to the work that we're doing as we move forward. I visited the McKinley School. I came back and I cried in my office that we were providing this kind of environment to our kids who were most in need. I went to the Jackson Mann School that we recently had to close because of the issues, or the rec school, and to see that we're going to put new buildings there and grow and see new innovation and new opportunities for our children is just so heartwarming. We've been able to work over the past several years on establishing our academic pathway. So there's one point of transition for our students. This is a key part of our work so that parents can know and be sure that their children are getting a quality guarantee 
an opportunity for libraries and gymnasiums and outdoor play spaces and science labs. I mean, these are the kinds of things that kids absolutely have to have to thrive. And so this is an opportunity today to put a down payment on those promises that the city of Boston is making to our children of Boston, and they deserve nothing less. Right now, our team is putting in investments in bathrooms. They're putting in investments in clean water. They're covering our radiators so that children do not get burned any longer. We fixed 12,000 windows. We have air conditioning going in this summer. Our auditoriums are getting upgraded. Lighting and painting is getting done so that our teachers don't have it falling on their heads and our kids. Um, and then one thing I'm very proud of is our outdoor learning spaces. This is so critically important to the Green New Schools deal to go outside to, to have healthy environments for our students. And through some of our ESSER funding, we will be funding a stipend at every single school, elementary school, to be able to go out and do learning uh, in gardening and outdoor play spaces, which will help with our children's mental health. And so that is really important. So no longer will I be up at night. No longer will I have to worry because I know that it is in the good hands with Mayor Wu and our entire school committee and all of you who are here today to ensure that this moves forward and that our children get the kind of environments that they deserve. Thank you. Next up, Chair of the Boston School Committee, Jerry Robinson. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And again, thank you, Mayor Wu, and thank you, Superintendent, for your undaunting pressure <laughs> to get this done. Um, I'm a lifelong Bostonian. I'm a graduate of the Boston Public Schools. I attended three schools during my career here, and only one of them still exists at a school. That school was built in 1909. I graduated in 1959. It was inadequate in 1959, yet it still is a cherished, wonderful in learning environment. But this, it's not even a 20th century environment, it's a 21st century environment. Um, as Bostonians, we've been here before. Many times we've heard the promises, we see some things happen, but for the majority of our kids that isn't the experience for our teachers, for our families. Um, if you are fans of school committee, you know that we have schools that are coming to us at every meeting. Families who are advocating, first graders who are advocating. They are absolutely right. They deserve the best that Boston can give them. Look around the city, go to the seaport, we are building gorgeous buildings for people who spend four or five hours, eight hours a day here. But we have kids who live their lives here in this community. And they need to experience the birthright of the city of Boston by giving them buildings that show how much we care about the kids that are born right here. We want them to go downtown and work in those buildings. We want them to be proud of this city. So we hope that today's moment is more than just the beginning. We're going to hold ourselves accountable. We're going to hold each other accountable. And we are going to do what is right for our kids. So I hope when we are back here next year at this time, we can tell you what we've done in year one of many years to come. Thank you. Next up, Chief of Operations, Dion Irish. Thank, thank you, Mayor. I think, uh, first conversation I had with the mayor, actually the mayor-elect at the time, was about school facilities. And ever since then, you know, myself and many members of the team have been eating, sleeping, and just thinking about how can we improve our school facility plans since then. Uh, so I want to thank the mayor for her leadership. I also want to thank Superintendent Caselius for this is something that she's been advocating for, for for many years and the many conversations I've had with her even prior to um, my current role as the Chief of Operations. So uh, it's great to be here today to, to see that this come to this point of fruition, understanding that, um, as the uh, Chair said, that this is the, the, the money that's committed here, as um, Rep. Holmes says, this is like real money, real investment, but we also want to be judged by, by our deeds, not our words. So that's our commitment. 
So good morning again. I want to thank everyone. It's a pleasure to be here at the McKinley Elementary School this morning as we announce a big step forward for schools. The Operations Cabinet is responsible for managing public facilities and, and projects across the city for many different agencies, but our, our largest client is a Boston Public School Department. I'm also excited to help lead a new interdepartmental team. Uh, as the mayor said, this is a all, all hands on deck approach with not only the operations cabinet, but others in the mayor's office, uh, BPS facilities team, uh, public facilities team. Um, you know, this is an unprecedented um, partnership to make sure we're moving our facilities forward. So we're taking big steps to invest in the team and the tools that we need. We understand that we can't just commit to funding projects without having the ability to manage projects. So we're going to be increasing staffing in our public facilities department. We're adding about 10 or 11 new positions there. We're also <laughs> increasing our staffing on the, the Buff, Boston Public School facility side of things as well with 15 new positions. So we're also starting to work on key tools that we'll need to continue to make holistic and strategic plans for our school facilities. BPS is currently working with Buretes Veritas Technical Assessments to complete a facilities condition assessment. And this tool will be uh, provide detailed objective analysis of school buildings and recommendations for renovation and rebuilding. I know today we're also going to be launching a, uh, launching a school building dashboard that will allow everyone to, to have full transparency and understanding the, the current conditions of our facilities. But with our facility condition assessment that that's being launched this summer, we're going to have an even better and more robust tool going forward as well. And we, we are also pledging to keep these tools updated because these assessments are great snapshots in time, but we must keep them refreshed and, and uh, updated so that the information is, um, is there for you in real time. Also on the public facility side, we're, going, we're leading um, studies launching this summer to uh, develop school design standards and education programming standards for pre-K to 6 and 7 to 12 schools. The most important part of this that you should know, this is, our commitment is to community engagement. We want this to be a community-led process with s students and families in front, educators. We want everyone's input as we develop plans that going forward will help us to, to speed the pace of new projects because we will have already have agreed and identified what our schools should look like, what should be in them, and you know what type of facilities we need. So this will provide us with a baseline for elementary and high schools. So should we look rooted in, um, in what our communities are calling for so we can accelerate future projects? So with these resources, we're committed to building uh, Boston school students, the buildings that they deserve. I also want to note that an important partner of, of this effort will be the Massachusetts School Building Authority. They've been a great partner for us in the past, and we look forward to increasing our partnership with them to help us to continue to grow on the um, $2 billion investment over time going forward. So thank you again for this opportunity. It's a great day to be here. Next up, President of the Boston Teachers Union, Jessica Tang. Oh, sorry. Marcella Thompson. Oh, Miss Thompson. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I messed up the order. <laughs> okay. Marcella Thompson. Parents. Today is a tremendous and terrific Thursday. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Marcella Elliott Thompson. I'm a resident of Roxbury, a parent of a 10th grader at Madison Park. Voca uh, technical vocational, my daughter's gonna kill me. <laughs> She's gonna kill me. Madison Park Technical Vocational High School, Gold Cardinals, and a teacher at the Winship Elementary School in Brighton. Hoot hoot. <laughs> As a BPS mom and an educator with 20 years of experience in the district, I've seen firsthand the differences in school facilities across the district. The difference in how it feels to walk into a beautiful, gleaming school with state-of-the-art science labs and fully stocked libraries, compared to school where the paint peeling, windows are cracked to get some air circulation, and educators are squeezed into every inch of space just to make do. I'm so excited. I'm trying to contain it, <laughs> to see this commitment in, uh, to investment in BPS facilities at the pace our kids deserve and have earned. My daughter at Madison Park and every student in Boston 
deserves to learn in facilities that are not only safe and nurturing, but also equipped with all the tools and resources they need to prepare for college and career. Space for vocational training, space for teachers to lesson plan, critical. Space for kids to access mental health services. We cannot deny that, so important. As a mom and longtime teacher, I deeply understand the years of pent up frustration with our school facilities. This new approach is refreshing in its transparency, in its clarity, in its ambition, and I'm so excited to see this work get started. Thank you, Mayor Wu. Thank you, Dr. Caselius, and thank you, Ms. Robinson, for the collaborative effort because our children should always be placed first. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. I, too, am having a hard time um, containing my excitement and happiness about this news. Uh, uh, my name is Jessica Tang. I am proud to serve as the president of the 10,000-member strong Boston Teachers Union. And uh, as the mayor had said, these investments are long overdue. And as educators and staff in the schools, we have been witnessing firsthand uh, how the, the, um, the facilities have been deteriorating and the deferred maintenance and so when we got this news we were just so so happy to hear it because this is a major major investment the 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 largest that I can think of actually in, in recent memory for decades. And uh, I know that uh, it's not just actually about the facilities, it's very much about the, the mayor's commitment to climate justice. And we also have a climate justice committee at the BTU and we've been meeting with City Hall and talking about a Green New Deal for Green New Schools. And um, this administration is, is executing it with a plan that, yes, has big scale vision about new buildings, major renovations, but it's also the small details that matter. So when students walk into schools and the you know the temperature is too warm, it does impact their ability to focus and, and learn. So the air conditioning is extremely important. Uh, when we go into schools and there's no green space and there's no outdoor classrooms or gardens, uh, you know, is it essential? Maybe not. But does it make a difference for the students who are going to school every day? Absolutely. And so it's not just about the big investments; it's all about the small ones. And uh, lastly, I'll just say too that I also deeply appreciate the commitment to partnering with families and students and educators uh, as this plan gets rolled out the community engagement process ensuring that families and students have an opportunity to share their hopes and dreams and ideas too uh, so that there is a great big vision but there's a lot of space for those who are on the ground and stakeholders and those of us using our schools to still give input as this plan continues to be rolled out and so we're incredibly grateful to this amazing major investment and this commitment to climate justice and just thrilled to be a partner and look forward to doing whatever we can to continue to support this work. And so just thank you very much. State Representative Russell Holmes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, want to just begin by saying thank you to all of the major participants, of course, to the school committee, to the superintendent, to the mayor, because of the fact that I continually say in many of the neighborhood meetings that when anyone, whether it be at the federal, city, or state level, if we're saying we don't have money, they're not telling you the truth. We actually have the funds. The question is, to the mayor's point, it's not a resource issue. It is about getting these resources to the right place in an equitable way. And so it's so great to see the mayor do that. I want to give a special shout out today to the facilities folks. Why? Because my wife is a, is a teacher at, at the Boston Latin School. She has taught at the Lee School, she has taught at the Linden School, and she has taught at the Latin School. And rest assured, she can see the difference in the resources and the schools at the Linden, the Lee, and the Latin. And so what she says to me often is that, hey, we teachers are very, very important, but what I was saying to Dion is the people who need the greatest shout out, she tells me every day, are those custodians. So let's give them a hand. Because when you are trying to hodgepodge schools that have been around for a hundred years, it is very tough to put these things back together and make sure that we can then make them all work. And so thank you to, the, to Jessica and all the many 10,000 teachers and all the folks who my wife is a part of. Just they're, they're working hard in a system that needs these resources. And so to Dion, to the mayor, to all of you, 
please continue to demand that mass building. We should be sending you guys all the money we can because of the fact that we are trying to educate children and we are trying to educate them in a way that they, is a very competitive environment. It's not just what we're teaching them. All of these folks, whether it be going into the trades, whether it be going into college, they are looking for fully rounded students. They're not looking for just the person who is just educated. They need the students who also have all of the acclimates, as, as uh, Brenda said, as the superintendent said, all the things that you're learning outside, all of the athletic facilities. We're looking for folks who can put on their resumes, not just, hey, here's my GPA, but look at the many other things that, that, uh, that they can provide. And so school building itself matters. Children think we care when they look at our facilities. I can tell you I've had a couple of conversations where parents have said, hey, we've moved from this building, I won't name it, to another building because of the fact that they believe that the, the education in this other building is better. However, the students said, why did you move me from this place to this one? Because that place had better facilities, because they felt as though they were going to be better treated in a better facility. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, the entire team. Again, thank you, custodians and the facilities teams. Keep holding it together, and have a great day. Okay, close us out. Miss Edith Bazil, I so apologize, is going to come up, a champion for, um, for justice within our district for so many and just a, a, a role model and someone who's been holding the district accountable for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Wu. I just want to thank you for your historic win for the city, and I want, you to, I want to thank you for this historic moment for students of Boston. I want to thank Dr. Caselius for her leadership, and also for Jessica Tang for her advocacy and representation of all those teachers who have worked so hard in the district and who have made things happen despite the challenges we've had with the pandemic and before. My name is Edith Bazell. I am a graduate of Boston Public Schools. I came back to the district to serve 32 years because I love this city. I love this district. And I know that we do great things. It's often not told. And I'm so extremely excited about this moment that our children are going to get respectful buildings and equity in all facilities. So I, I'm just so appreciative of this effort, the transparency, the leadership of the entire team behind us and all of those of you who have worked very hard for this moment. And I look forward to continue great things in this city. So I, again, I just want to say thank you to the Honorable Mayor Wu for all of her leadership and all of her work to make this happen, to stand here at the McKinley Schools. When I started my career, um, I, I, I collaborated with the McKinley Schools. I didn't work within this facility, but I know of many students who have been sent here. This is a therapeutic school for students with disabilities who need targeted support and intervention. And I'm just so, so excited that this facility will now have everything that it needs to ensure that our students and in the city of Boston are able to realize their potential and create a pathway for college, career, vocational, or whatever they desire. So thank you. Thank you so much for this. And I really appreciate it. Okay. Let's do on-topic questions for anyone up here. What's the time frame for this building? This is the first one. So um, I want to just give a little insight, and I'm going to pass it over to Indy or, or the school later to answer this specific question. But just so everyone has a sense, um, this was really not about picking a big number to sound like a big number. We are going to touch every school community to deliver the buildings that every single one of our students deserve. There's a process for how each building goes from the current state to the beautiful, healthy, inspiring uh, space that we envision. Usually it begins with a needs assessment in partnership with community, and so that requires some funding. Then it goes into a design stage to map out exactly what that looks like with the layouts and, and classrooms and performing arts spaces, et cetera, and then to construction. And so it is a multi-year process for, for many of our buildings, and that $2 billion, $2 billion plus dollar number um, currently includes, what was it, 600 and... $605 million in this immediate capital budget uh, that has been proposed to the City Council for this budget cycle. That includes some of the needs assessment funds. And so as those needs assessments get completed, those schools will then transition to the much larger funding for design and construction, and new projects will enter at the needs assessment phase. So that's the, that's the overview. And then if someone could talk about the McKinley. 
Sure. But the, uh, the mayor pretty much covered it, though. The t typical project um, timeline is we begin with an assessment, which we, we refer to as a study. Then we go from there to a design to construction. So overall, it's typically a, a three, anywhere from three to five year process to from from and having an idea and assessing what you need to actually um, close, you know, closing out construction and, and reopening a building. And this particular building is, is in the um, will be in the assessment phase. It's funded in this capital budget for an, for the the initial part of the process to. Towards a new school. Approximately, approximately, yes. And just a quick follow up on that. When will these assessment periods begin? Are they starting this month, next month, this summer? So they're currently in the budget that's been proposed. So once the budget gets approved, the funding kicks in July 1st, and that will be the beginning of, of uh, our public facility department assigning it to a project manager and then beginning that process. I just want to give a little bit of extra context, too, that, um, you know, I had been part of city government for, for some time now. It has, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the first major school building project that the district had done in decades was the Dearborn STEM Academy, and that happened in 20, what was it, 2015? 2018 was completed. So 2018 it was completed, again, had gone through a multi-year process to get to that point after the Dearborn STEM Academy, then Boston Arts Academy. But that's basically all we have seen in decades sort of at the point of completion. Um, we're now almost about to um, kick off the construction project at the Carter School, the Quincy School. And so there have been a couple more in the pipeline. But Boston has been at the, you know, even when we kind of restarted the commitment to new buildings, it was one school every seven-ish years. So we really need to flip that where we're doing many schools all at the same time, tightening up the timelines for these processes. The more capacity we have on staff, and the staff is actually not reflected in the $2 billion funding. That is entirely for capital funds. The more staff capacity we have, the more we do these um, we're working with community to identify what does a dream elementary school look like? What does a dream high school look like? Then we can start to speed up all the pieces of design and, and um, the, the ripple effects will mean that we're working faster on all fronts. Okay, Mayor, if I could follow up on that, what is the time frame for the entire project? When do you want to see all of these students actually complete? When do I want to see it? <laughs> I mean, um, there are a couple moving pieces, but I, I will say today, our commitment is to make sure that every single Boston Public School student is in a building that we are proud of, that as parents, as guardians and, and family members, that we are excited to send them off to school every day. Um, right now, we're often excited to send them off, but then we have to worry about whether they've packed enough water in their water bottles to make it through a hot day or whether they um, get enough outside time so they can ha actually have fresh air. That needs to, the excitement needs to be included in the facilities piece as well. Um, and so we're moving as fast as we can, but I know that our pace of how we do things cannot be at the usual speed of government. We have to move at the urgency of our families. Every year that goes by, every mayoral term that goes by, a child entering kindergarten is about to complete almost done with elementary school, right, or is starting high school and then about to graduate and leave our system. And so we, we're going to get it all done. Uh, this $2 billion number will grow, um, and we need partnership to keep that happening at the state level, and so very grateful to those who are going to fight for those resources alongside us. But most of all, we need to prove that it works. In some ways, previous processes have um, exacerbated the frustration of families in, in some ways. I was part of Build BPS, and it represented a for the first time in a long time, a commitment to saying this is important, facilities really matters. But having been to so many of those meetings and having seen the results, there were still so many unanswered questions by the end of, well, now we kind of know how our buildings are, but not a specific date by which my child's building is going to be fixed or, or what the improvements look like. We're looking, again, with the um, buildings, what was the technical assessment? 
facilities condition assessment. And the build, what is the, the da database that we're releasing today? The dashboard. Okay, so the building's dashboard today shows all that we know immediately. The facilities condition assessment that Sam and the team are leading uh, will keep us up to date so we no longer have to keep spending a couple years doing one pass through, but we'll know in re real time. Yeah. I would, can I say what I want? <laughs> I would like us to have fully redone every school building in Boston in the next decade. That is ambitious. We're going to, you know, we, we need, <laughs> um, and we need to do that as even, if that can even be reined in faster, great. Um, this is going to require all out partnership. We've been already reaching out to our real estate community when we met with developers to introduce them to our new chief of planning. The strongest ask that I made in that room was help us think creatively about financing, about partnerships so that we can move even faster and not just rely on state and MSBA funding. Do you want to talk about Madison Park? So I, I think Indy probably knows more than me about her Sam. But the... Okay, I'll start by saying um, I think I have probably visited Madison Park more times as mayor than any other school yet. Um, we've had um, the chance to, even prior to um, starting this administration, to work alongside council colleagues and spend time with the friends group and alumni group and go out to Worcester to see what similar or, um, partner vocational technical high schools look like. There are incredible things happening at Madison Park. The young people are winning national competitions in culinary arts. They are learning how to, um, they're forming electric vehicle servicing and maintenance partnerships. They're working with um, the trades to make sure that the jobs created here are for Boston kids. But the building feels so outdated. And um, we need to make sure that we have state of the art, cutting edge technology facilities for our young people. We need to put even more investment. Madison Park is often left off, left off of the list when we think about facilities. So I think we're at the study phase in this capital budget, uh, but the goal is to bring a, a brand new Madison Park and follow the lead of our community members who have put a lot of time and energy into developing plans year after year after year. Um, so now's the time to make it happen. Uh, not specifically on Madison Park, but I do want to add um, that the study that we're conducting to develop our design and educational standards going forward would also help us to speed up the timeline. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a typical project, you know, it's a year for a study, then it's like a year and a half for design, and then construction. Well, we're, our long-term plan is once we have agreement on what our design will be, we can dram dramatically shorten the period of time that we take on design for schools going forward after we've conducted that study and, and have, a, have standards. Mayor, do you have a plan for just space that the Mission High School currently occupies? We don't have any um, plans for that at this time. Thank you, everyone.